Cornering is one of those techniques that we learn as beginners, but even at an advanced and pro level, we're still constantly trying to improve it. It's one of those skills that you can always get better at and there's always room for improvement. I wanna show you techniques that'll really help you get your cornering to that next level and it'll give you a really great foundation to begin practicing and progressing to get even better and faster and smoother in any turn you approach. When riders look fast in a turn, it's usually done two different ways. The number one way is coming really outside and railing it as hard as you can, getting all that weight on the back and just going top to bottom through the turn, getting all that weight in the turn and just ripping right through it. The second thing you see, and this is very common in bike films, is coming in very inside, scoring off the turn. So rather than hitting the whole curve, you're just choosing a section of it. And it's not the most practical for the most part because it actually can slow you down, but it's a really quick snappy movement, commonly called a cutty because you're basically cutting up a piece of the turn and ripping up dust. And that is what looks really cool a lot of the time because it's a quick, fast motion. You're twisting those hips. And since it's like an in and out motion really quick, like basically bouncing in and out of a turn, it looks like you're going a lot faster than you actually are. And it can be pretty cool and stylish. A lot of the time, the way someone likes to corner comes down to personal preference. So I'm gonna show you both of these techniques and I'll go over the basics of them with you. Then you can decide what your favorite is. In order to rail the entire turn and hit the whole curve of it, you wanna come in very outside, very high. So entering up here and you wanna be riding downhill through the entire corner. Looking at the exit the second you're in it, leaning your entire body, dropping that inside shoulder. This is really key because you can get yourself nice and flat and it's almost like you're wall riding the corner. This is one of my favorite ways to ride turns because I just love how I feel like I'm gripped into a wall. And then I get my weight on my back tire and I'm pushing my pedals into the dirt almost. And I'm really like getting that traction by gripping into the turn. As I'm doing that, I'm looking out where I'm going. My hips and my torso is steering me and that's how I'm exiting the turn. As you enter the corner, come in nice and high lean your body, drop your inside shoulder, turn your torso the direction you wanna go and look where you wanna go right away. Looking at the exit the second you're in it and setting up for the next thing ahead of you. Keep that weight on the back tire and try to get your weight into the corner itself. So as you're putting your weight on the back tire, you are pushing it into the corner and that's giving you more traction, more speed, it's the same essentials as pumping something you're really pushing into the ground and getting all the momentum and speed you can the more you drop that inside shoulder the more flat you'll get and the faster and more stylish it will look when you square off a turn you want to hit it more inside and you want to enter the corner light instead of going right in the entry point of the turn you want to enter it more inside over here and then come into it nice and light for example this is a really nice wide turn so even as like a downhill racer or someone who's trying to ride this corner as fast as they possibly can, it does make a lot of sense to enter it really late like this, square it off. You can even come into it here and you're essentially skipping half the turn, making the line way shorter and way faster and then ripping right through it. And then you can follow the exact same techniques I just described by railing the whole corner with the leaning, the dropping the shoulder, getting the weight back and you'll really shorten up your ride and you'll have the fastest line. But sometimes you don't always have the fastest line when you inside it and square it off like this. This corner is a really great example for being able to square things off and go quick. But a lot of the time you'll find a corner with a radius that's like half the distance of this. So rather than having like this nice wide open corner, it's gonna be a really tight turn. And what you'll see a lot of riders do to try to look really cool on their bike is they'll enter it halfway, they'll come in light. And the second they get in, rather than following all the proper cornering techniques, they're just gonna like enter it and then what you wanna do is twist your hips to the outside of the corner and like really try to slash it. Like imagine you're just like slashing the corner with your back wheel, that's really what you're doing. And you're still looking out at the exit of where you wanna go and you're like almost turning your body with your hips and you're really trying to punch the corner with your back tire. So when you see people like destroy berms and rip them up and kick up a bunch of dust, they're basically using their back tire like a machete, like they're coming in and they're slashing that turn. And it's a really quick movement. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And when you're first learning it, you probably will lose all your speed on the exit. And to be honest, this style of riding looks really cool and people call it cutting a turn, but it honestly isn't that practical. And a lot of the time it slows you down on the exit, which is why you don't see downhill racers follow this technique very often. 
Most of the time when you see a downhill racer like bouncing in and out of a corner tight like that and kick up a bunch of dust, it's because they're still entering it nice and high on the entry, but then they're coming in and they're, they're punching the corner like that, but they really understand the corner and they know exactly the line they need to take to have a nice smooth flowing straight line in and out of it. So it's never a sharp motion. The reason their back tire is kicking up like that is because they're going so fast and they're so gripped into that turn that the tire is essentially drifting off the berm as they're still in it. And that's just what happens when you're going so fast that you're getting loose on your bike and you're like out of control yet in control at the same time because you're able to hook into it and grip nicely but things are starting to move around on you that you aren't expecting. When you score off a turn you want it to be a quick in and out. Come into it late. Once your tires are on the berm itself, you want to slash the corner by rotating your hips the direction you're turning and imagine you're punching the ground with your back tire. How this is done is by dropping your heels, keeping that weight on the back tire, having a really quick snappy motion in your hips and knees and allowing your arms to stay nice and loose and relaxed and steering you throughout the whole turn. You're probably wondering at this point, how do I get myself to commit to really leaning into a corner and going nice and fast? And what I want you to try is going into it a little slower than you normally would and think about getting both tires perfectly up on the berm, like you're wall riding it almost, and then dropping that inside shoulder. You don't have to do this fast, just at a nice decent pace, just fast enough to get you around the corner and to that feeling of getting lower to the ground and leaning your body over starts to feel more natural. Make a progression out of this, make it an exercise for yourself where you go faster and faster each time until you hit that threshold of this is the fastest I can go before I start to lose traction or it starts to feel a little loose. As you get more practice and you get this feeling more familiar in your mind, you can play around with different movements, work on hitting the burn from different locations, and the whole feeling of cornering overall will become very familiar and less foreign over lots of time and practice.